Welcome back to Stooge Stream. This is Making an Impact, your weekly Impact Wrestling review slash recap show. We're looking at the episode of Impact Wrestling that aired on the 14th of December 2017. I am your host, the Stooge. As always, I hate this bit. I'm joined by your leader, G Banks. How's it going, everyone? Can you believe we've been doing this for more than a year now? I've been stuck with you for more than a year now. I can't believe I've been having to see your face for a year now. Dude, that's harsh. I can be harsh, yo. All right, and our special guest on this episode being the last episode of Impact Wrestling for the year, because the next two are just wrap up, so we're skipping those. <laughs> so the last episode of Making an Impact for the year, we're joined by The Knockout, Fiona. Way to save the best till last. Well, you're better than him. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I'm pretty much the best, but you can be second. <laughs> it's always good to be second. Can you... I, I put up with this constantly. Constantly. Well, I'm here now. It's going to be okay. I, I doubt I'm it. happy to run the show here. I'll take over. You quiet. Back in your box. All right, let's start this off. We started off the show with a number one contenders match for the Knockouts title. We know later on we're going to see Rosemary and Laurel Van Ness for the Knockouts Championship. We need a new number one contender. So we have Sienna versus Ooh. KC Spinelli Boo. versus Madison Rain. What? Versus Ali. Shouldn't be there. Wait, who? All three of them except for the first one. Sienna? Yes. So, dude, Casey Spinelli has come out of nowhere. She's Casey Spinelli herself. sounds like something you eat at an Italian restaurant. <laughs> That's so harsh. All right, well, what, why shouldn't Madison Rain, a six, what five or six time knockouts champion, because she's time knockout champion, because she failed at NXT. Do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to go on bunny ears next? Really? Right. Like, come on, man. Let's skip that. Okay, yeah, all right. I have to agree with you. Madison Rain's going to be eating shit for a while mm -hmm. due to her failed NXT tryout. Yeah. You know, you saw this, obviously, you saw the tweets and her tweeting out herself in the NXT shirt at the fucking performance center, and clearly it's gone well. What did you think of this whole situation? Don't do that. It's like updating your LinkedIn account after a week at a job, and then it ends miserably, and you have to, like, retract, retract. <laughs> it never happened. It never happened. Take me back. Take me back. I'm a knockout for life. Mm -hmm. Good times. I love the knockouts, but I would still like to see more of them. We're kind of stuck with the roster of six at the moment. Yes, we've got Casey Spinelli who's come in and sort of been thrust into the mix. But yeah, I don't know. I want more. They did mention in the main event that uh, Valkyrie will be coming back next year. Oh, so Tyre at the moment is in the middle of organizing a wedding. Uh, they said, what's her name? Uh, little girl, Eddie Edwards' wife. Oh, yeah, little Miss Trisha. What's her name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, Miss Michelle. Miss thing. Yeah, Eddie Edwards' wife, that's her yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, Eddie Edwards' Smashed wife. Head. She'll be back. Um, they said a couple other names as well. And it looks like they will Yay. be bringing some more knockouts in next year. Good. We need yeah. more knockouts so Sienna can take care of them. So this match itself was really interesting. I thought the different styles from all the girls and their mix of styles was really good. You had Sienna and KC Spinelli as the powerhouses in the match. You mm. had Madison Rain and um, playing more of the X Division, faster style. And you had Ali playing... Ali? Ali, yeah, I was about to say, she's Ali. Because that's yeah, a whole does. gimmick. Ali thinks. But if you notice, she started picking up a couple of moves from Gail Kim, like the double head scissors and the... Um, you know, so it looks like her story arc is going to be that over time she's going to become more and more capable and more and more like Gail Kim. Mm. Look, Madison pulled it out. She's a mom. She's been around for since day one almost, but there's just something about her. Like she's just got no personality, no matter how hard she tries. And Madison Rain, we have to say as well, it's something you have to give her a props for. She's the first female wrestler or the first wrestler to come back from having a child mm. and come back to the ring everyone else has had kids and left and she was the first to prove that you can have kids and be a full-time pro wrestler you know what, to be honest i'm just sick of abuse to talking uh, you know about the past all this time it's new you know it's all new it's a new generation guys come on get with it all right well speaking of the new generation ali wins the match by rolling up sienna no, that's, the wrong, that's the wrong new generation <laughs> Well, what? You don't like that? No, I don't like that. No, not that part. No. Well, Ali did get the win, which makes her the number one contender. Can I ask a question? If we go back to when Ali 
and BS Braxton Sutter first came in. It felt that they were really pushing BS, which is big total BS. Mm -hmm. And then the whole like Spud's teeth down his throat shit happened. Did they intend for this whole alley to sort of rise up the ranks like this? I, it doesn't feel like it, eh? No, I'll tell you what happened. They tried to push uh, Braxton Sutter with Ali because they knew Ali had some sort of reputation. Obviously, it didn't work out, and Braxton Sutter is still stuck in the Indies. Yeah, so what it looks like to me is they brought them both in because they're an actual couple and so forth. It looks like they were going to give them a push. They're as... both vegan, too. <laughs> So many wrestlers are vegan. All the Brits, they're all... It's crazy. Yeah. Why? I don't know. But anyway, it, and it seems to me like they came in and the crowd got behind Ali. Yeah. And bit by bit, they didn't get behind Braxton. It doesn't matter how hard they tried to push him. Even after the whole teeth kicking in incident, they still gave him a bit of a push and it didn't work. So he became the background character, whereas Ali became the foreground character. The last time we saw BS was when uh, Alberto um, and Johnny Impact mm -hmm. were in their brawl backstage mm -hmm. and the Tasmanian Devil effect happened and he just got rolled into it and started brawling <laughs> with, who was so, it? Uh, Richard yeah. Justice or yeah, someone yeah, else, yeah. random. Cold of Lee dude. Yeah, yeah, uh, Caleb Conley. Caleb, yeah. yeah. I, I hate to say it, but I wonder if it's testament to Maria because she was the heel leader manager at the time. And if it hadn't been for her bullying Ali, I don't think she would have got that face pop. I, th I think a lot of it did come down to Maria probably saw something in Ali and was like, I'm going to do this storyline. We need her. And it just happened Actually, to her. if we're bringing Maria back into it, she did uh, develop a lot of those characters. Yeah. Sienna, um, Ali... Uh, Laurel even, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so and, did, and didn't they leave for bigger and better things? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so better. where are they now? <laughs> what happened to Mike and Maria Canellis? The Bennets? No, no, the Canellis. <laughs> so Mike and Maria Canellis. Keeping Kanellis up with the Canellis. <laughs> went Wait, to he WWE. Took his wife's name? Yeah, yeah. That was the whole storyline. So oh, he went to that. WWE and took his <laughs> wife's name. Um, Mike ran into a little bit of a uh, substance abuse issue and had to go to rehab yeah. about three weeks after signing with WWE. <laughs> <laughs> so he was gone for a couple of months. Uh, they've just recently come back to uh, TV. I believe they've been buried once or twice on TV, but they put him back on the house show circuit a few months ago and he's just gotten buried. Mm. So we'll see him in Impact in three months? Um, I think they're going to run their contracts out and we will see Mike and Maria Bennett back in Impact at some stage. I can't believe he took his wife's name. It's like forbidden in the cult. What? It's forbidden in the cult. You can do Why? what you want. It's Let 2018 do... next yeah, year. Yeah, but in the cult, you don't have, you know, you don't take the wife's name. You're such a misogynist. All right, nice. next up. I'm skipping over you. We had Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley, the cult of Lee versus Desmond Xavier and Ishimori. This Irrelevant. is... What? Irrelevant. <laughs> really? Should... Yes, really. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, so the whole thing here is uh, Ishimori was in a three-way tag team match with Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley as his partners. They lost. They've been beating up Ishimori ever since. Desmond Xavier came for the save. And now it's led to this tag team match. I don't know what's been match. happening. Ishimori has been the letdown for that team, so they're just putting him in place. He's not part of that team. He was just slapped in it as part of that match. He was never part of that team. Yeah, he was. He knew what he was getting into. and cause He, he was doesn't even speak English. I'm pretty sure he didn't know what he was getting into. Um, tr trust me, uh, Charlie knows great Japanese. Can, can you... Well, I don't know. I can't say I disagree. Like, it's wrestling. He would know what he's getting into. Yeah, see? I told you. You both suck. So this match is going to be a spectacular. Um, now, recently I found out that Desmond Xavier is actually a lot greener than you oh, expect. Oh, that he explains had... a lot. What? No, he's spectacular in the ring. Mm. Yeah. You, you liked him until he turned face. No, not Was he really. ever a heel? Mm, cocky he, young yeah, was cocky. See, Harry. I liked that. Mm. I liked the cockiness in him. It showed potential. But see, now he's just you know. Bland but baby yeah, face. yeah. See, it explains why he yeah explains BBF. everything. No, he's not Roderick Strong. Don't <laughs> give him the bit. He's not Roderick Strong. <laughs> Roderick Strong. If anyone gets More that like joke, Roderick yeah. Bland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Roderick Neutral. So boring. I can keep going. Do the okay. We're gonna have to side note here. One of the greatest moments in NXT was. He came out and was about to join Undisputed and the crowd was losing their mind. Mm. 
And, you know, he slapped Adam Cole, beat up Undisputed, and threw the thing back. The crowd started booing. Like, because he didn't turn heel, they just <laughs> lost it. They're like, boo, get out! Oh, <laughs> uh, Roderick oh, Strong. Oh, Roddy, Rod, Roddy. I tried Aww. to team him up with the Authors of Pain to give him a rub. That didn't work at all. Ah, Roderick. Anyway, Roddy. back to this match. So this match was excellent. Look, I think these are four of the best competitors that we currently have in TNA. These guys are all spectacular. Even though Desmond Xavier is really green, they've protected him by putting him in the ring with people like Trevor Lee, like Caleb Conley, like Ishimori that can hide his weaknesses and just highlight the spectacular athleticism that this young kid has. He's in his early 20s. Like, he's only going to get better. Mm. We'll see. Well, just think about, like, when Mahabali Shira first came in compared to what he was the last time we saw him. He'd improved leaps and bounds. This is a starting point that Desmond Xavier has. Imagine when he gets comfortable in the ring, when he, like, gets that... You know, it takes 10,000 hours before you're good at something. Uh, he's not mm. old enough to have his 10,000 hours yet. <laughs> what happened to Mahabali Shira? Oh, Mahabali Hogan will be back soon, don't worry. Yeah, he'll come back with yeah, his shirt Yeah, he'll just rip a shirt off, off yeah, and yeah, do something, yep. Yeah, replace some guy. So being that all four of these guys are X-Division competitors, we got a high-flying, fast, like this was like watching a WWE matching fast-forward, fast match. Mm. Uh, everyone in this went 110%. I thought Trevor Lee looked particularly great, delivering some devastating, high-power moves. Uh, Caleb Connolly still... Th there's something missing. Like, he's mm. got the in-ring skill, He's but there's something missing from that guy. What's missing? I don't know, there's just that, that, like, I can see that there's something there, that there's a personality there waiting to come out, and it just yeah. hasn't flourished yet. No, I feel like he should keep following, that's where he would flourish more. I see, I think that's where his problem is, like, he really needs to come out from under the shadow, and, like, actually have a, a bit of a spotlight put on him, maybe a microphone, no, let I him talk No, I don't feel like he bit. should be the goat, I think he should be a sheep still. Well, the couple of times that we've seen him talk, even as part of the Cult of Elite, I really enjoyed it. I thought he had a good rhythm to him. He's funny, clearly. Because like, he's been me... guided. Dude, let me talk about this guy without you going back to Trevor Lee. Can you stop? Why? Trevor Lee's a great man. We should talk okay, more about Trevor forget Lee. forget it. All right. So, in the end of the match, Ishimori gets a roll-up, but he ties up Trevor Lee in the roll-up. It was a little bit more interesting than just the flat roll-up that Ali got. It's not just your typical schoolboy. He actually yeah. locks his legs up into a submission so he can't move. Cheating. What? No, it's a submission. It's a bit cheating. You should, you know, just pin him instead of going for a submission and pin at the same time. You can do that. Uh, can we get a ruling on this, like a neutral person? Is that cheating? What's that? Rolling someone up into a submission. Oh, uh, it's it's not technically cheating. Thank you. But take, it's, I'll take the technicality. But, but it's... I'll take the technicality. Hmm. I'll take the butt, though. What's the butt going? Where's the butt going? <laughs> it's like poor sportsmanship there cheating. There we go. See? It's not poor... It was a great move. He turned a schoolboy into like a read... leg tie-up octopus thing. It was kind of cool. See, so if you'd read Bob, you would see that it's actually cheating. <sighs> References cheating. to Bob. Oh. What? You, I don't know how. You want me to bring out Bob? I've got it here. No, I'm, no, that's my Necronomicon copy. That's not Bob. Like, what? I know they look similar because they're demonic texts. But oh, okay. That's not Bob, is it? Oh. No, that's a Necronomicon. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes, I have a Necronomicon notebook. Anyway, next up we had... Petey Williams and Johnny Impact backstage. Their tag team partner tonight is going to be Alberto Del Rio. He comes around. El Patron. Uh, sorry, El Patron. I keep forgetting because he usually wears the ADR pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll let you on. I'll let you on. Uh, and he just comes along and just to give his tag team partner shit. Yeah, didn't, wasn't he threatening him last week? Yeah, he's your next Johnny. And now he's just. That's some great chemistry, I must say. Yeah, like, full on, like, he just comes over and goes, hey, we're working together tonight, you're both pieces of garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has to show who's the man of the tag team, you know, of that How group. How dare he talk to Canada like that? He's talking in to Canada. all of Canada oh. in Canada. Can you pronounce that right? Petey Williams? Yeah, sorry, he's talking to Canada in Petey Williams, yeah, my yeah, mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I love this new incarnation of Alberto, I have to say. You don't know whether he's actually about to snap at any moment, like, for real snap, and just start, like, dive bombing the whole like arena yeah. like the opposite of what johnny impact did to him just start taking out random crowd members it does seem like he's a man on the edge he really does seem like a man and i think he's using like his past year 
and let's not go into his history and stuff, but he's harnessing that and making it a half real storyline of like, this would drive a man insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will, wanted to go past, you know, past his history, but I will. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave that for another we'll day. We'll leave that for another. I'm sure we'll have an Alberto El Patron retrospective. <laughs> for sure. one, one yeah, time we'll running. go for about two hours. Yeah. Yeah. We get out this week's flashback match was a women's gauntlet match. It was uh, a really interesting match. We had people like Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, of course, Gal Kim, Awesome Under Kong. different monikers, thank you. There was. She was still uh, Angel Williams and Talia Madison. Mm. You know what I figured out? They couldn't count back then. How what? fast was it counting when they were bringing all the wrestlers uh, in? Yeah, it was no, like they, 10, 9. It was like, wait, there's already, like, yeah. someone already entered. Like, well, awesome, Kong. awesome Kong hadn't even entered and they were already <laughs> counting the next action. person. They're like, wait, what? Yeah, it, see, what happens is you start running out of airtime on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that two minute wait becomes like, you can watch, this happens in the Royal Rumble as well. If you time in between the things, uh, sometimes it goes for like four minutes because Brock Lesnar's doing spots. Mm. And then sometimes it goes for 30 seconds because, you know, no Santino one. Marella just came out. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah, time doesn't just randomly skip. Yeah. So this was a really good flashback match, though, and it reminds you of just how good the Knockouts division was when they started. That was mm. really early on. And I highly mm. recommend... You can tell it's early because it was Gail's original nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was actually, um, but I really recommend getting the Global Wrestling Network. I'm a, a member of it. This isn't a paid ad of any description. I really enjoy. I, I, I wish it was. I wish it was. Yeah, I wish it was a paid ad. Yeah, <laughs> stop sponsor us. us. Yeah. We'll take an anthem. We've but, done it like four weeks in a row now. Mm. <laughs> stop paying us. But I'm loving going back and just watching random old episodes of Impact from 2005 or pay-per-views from you know 2009 or whatever mm. like just random mm. ma and you can click on anything and the crowd was so hot and mm. all the rest of it, until hogan rocked up and just fucked everything no forever. that's good it makes us connect sometimes when i come over because let's face it like we, we don't really connect over anything else besides just wrestling thanks for that no i appreciate worries. it my pleasure thought we were friends we are that, friends. that's hurtful dude. Uh, you know that's hurtful what i'm just being honest remember new year new me this is what i put up with all the time do you see this what? I'm just being honest. He's here to watch the wrestling. Yeah, see? I, I told you I can't watch it at okay, my house. Okay, can we get on with the thing? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All Keep right. going. So we see Eli Drake and Chris Adonis backstage. They're conferring with Jimmy Jacobs. Jimmy's got something Jimmy's up his, his sleeves. name. What? Chris Angel. <laughs> All right, you got me on that one. He is Chris Angel. you got to admit. He looks like Chris Angel. And he even said it in an interview with Joe Jericho that his whole look is... Joker's like, so what's the look you're going for? He's like, Chris Angel. <laughs> like, hey, if I could afford a makeup, I'd do the Chris Angel look too, but I can't afford it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so something's coming up. Something dodgy's coming along. We know that. How's it dodgy? I, we, well, Eli Drake and Chris Adonis haven't announced who their partner is for their upcoming match. They want to be spontaneous. Is it, it going to be Jimmy Jacobs? I don't know. Hopefully. No, we haven't seen Jimmy wrestle yet in um, Impact Wrestling. I wouldn't so mind seeing some magic. I wouldn't mind either. Next up, we had Alberto PD, better known as Canada, mm -hmm. and Johnny Impact versus Chris Adonis, Eli Drake, and Jimmy Jacobs' surprise partner for the team. Dong. Congo Kong is back! So I'm trying to do like a, you know, that, what that Chinese... The, the gong. Gong, gong thing, gong. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Yeah, that was bad. What anyway, so it looks like Jimmy Jacobs is going to be Congo Kong's manager. I, I like this. I like this. A lot. Yes. Do you want to be my so, manager? No. What? Why? So it looks like Congo Kong finally got his princess. <laughs> <laughs> got you both. I've been waiting no, I was, since I, I saw was laughing that. At... I've been waiting since I saw it. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at something. Knockout Fiona said something like two hours ago. Mm, yeah, 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 when you weren't Good listening. for you. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Whew. Yeah. So this match, of course, you know, is going to fall apart. You've got a, a six-way tag team match with a team that can't get along, a team that doesn't know each other, a Congo rampaging Congo Kong with no one to stroke his titties to calm him down. Oh, he's got... Chris Angel to do it now. I don't think he's going to be doing that. I would enjoy Chris Angel if he did that to me. So this match falls apart at one stage. Um, Johnny Impact gets just absolutely dropped 
on the ramp by Alberto Alpatron with a vicious DDT. Oh, wait, they were team members? Yeah, they were supposed to be team members. Oh, uh, I thought it's it was like, uh, Canada and Johnny Impact. Versus everyone. No, versus um, Alpatron versus, uh, you know... It felt like uh, that, yeah, Eli Drake. Three teams competing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, at another point, Congo Kong just flat out kidnaps Petey Williams. Oh, uh, uh, I don't think he kidnapped him. He... Knocked him out, slung him over no, his no, shoulder. No, no, dude. He doesn't kidnap people. When he takes people, he gets... Because he's hungry. Remember I told you he was a cannibal? Is, is Kong Kong going to eat Canada? I'm pretty sure Canada's going to be off the map soon. So, yeah. It seemed like he was either going to do that or something else. No, no, he's eating Canada. Have you ever seen um, Mel Brooks' History of the World? No. Have you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's this great bit where he goes back to caveman time and he shows the first marriage. <laughs> and it's a cave woman smelling a flower and a caveman just rocks up with a bat and smacks her on the head and grabs her by the hair and drags her back to the cave and goes and now the first marriage and he goes and shortly after the first gay marriage you see the cave dude smelling a, a rose and the dude comes over and smacks him on the head pulls him by the hair looks at him and goes nah and just drags <laughs> him into the cave <laughs> that's what that reminded me of <laughs> Are you implying that... Uh, I'm not implying nothing. I'm just saying that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> what Congo Kong does to Canada in his spare time is his business. Okay, I'll let that one just a bit go of motorboating now. of those beautiful, beautiful man moves. <laughs> you motorboating son of a bitch. Please stop it. I don't want to picture this in my head. I've already got 40 <laughs> images of it right now and I can't delete them. So continue on to the next segment, please. Uh, so, okay, uh, as I said, shit goes wild after Alberto does drop uh, Johnny Impact. He runs into the ring quickly, gets the pin on Eli Drake after doing a massive frog splash. That was a big, big frog splash. He got some air, and he's a big man, too. Mm. I was a bit conflicted by the end result, I'm not going to lie. I'll be honest with you, I was, too. Mm. And I don't know, that it's hard to know who yeah, to go for. Yeah, it's right, boo or cheer. No, because like once Canada was kidnapped and Johnny Impact was dropped, Alberto, I'm not going for him, and Eli, like, he's on the wrong side of the fence he's as not well. on the wrong side of the fence, excuse you, he's on the right side. He's the bad guy. He's not the bad guy. He's it, the- He's the champion! How can he be the- Champs yeah. aren't bad guys! What he stole the title! The guy! What, he didn't steal anything. He won the title fair and square. You saw that. Using Chris at the, he's, I'm not having this. I'm, I've usually got to put up with one person. I got stupid in stereo it's tonight. The what is, champion! What are you, Just what, don't what? disrespect the champion. Please. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can we can we move on? As Does long as you say on? sorry to Eli. I'm Drake. not saying sorry to shit. Can we move on, please? But say sorry to Eli. No. Eli Drake needs no. to so Joseph Parks and his cousin Chandler, who we've seen in the Parks, Parks and Parks commercials mm -hmm. for the past couple of weeks of backstage, taking in his cousin's legacy, Chandler now wants to be a professional wrestler starting next year. Interesting. I want to see where Chandler goes from here. Joseph looks a little bit concerned for him because he has been a veteran of the squared circle. He knows how dangerous mm. things can get in there. I've never seen Joseph in there. We've seen Joseph Parks in there many times. He had a great little run with um, Eric Young a few years ago, and he, he had matches recently. No, I've never seen jo Joseph Parks wrestle. I've seen Abyss wrestle, but not Joseph Parks. We've seen Joseph Parks wrestle recently. Mm. He's Abyss's brother. You know Joseph Parks? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. You're a smart ostrich. <laughs> so we had a an announcement. The first ever three-way grand championship match is coming. It's EC3 Woo. versus Matt Seidel <coughs> versus Fora. <laughs> As EC3 said. <laughs> I think it translates to Falaba. <laughs> no, I like the first one better. <laughs> there was one thing I picked up in this promo that I thought was absolutely hilarious. And Whoever edited this is clearly a smart ass because there was a point where Matt Seidel even buries the Grand Championship by going, the rules are convoluted enough already. Well, no, what did he say? Something convoluted. like... Convoluted. Yeah, the it rules are convoluted, so convoluted, and they're even more convoluted now. Yeah. Right, it's like, dude, you just buried the... Convoluting, convoluted... Rules. Yeah. You just completely buried the Grand Championship. You buried the Championship he that you're fighting for. He listens to your for. show, clearly. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I hope he doesn't. Shout out. Oh, did. shit, yeah. yeah. You're in trouble, son. Yeah. Well, shout out to Matt Seidel, dude. We're right there with you. 420 and all. Yeah, he's welcome around here anytime. <laughs> in Australia. What's his real name? Is it Evan Bourne for no, real? No, it's Matt Seidel. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess we're going to see that next year. What, see Matt Seidel? No, the three-way grand championship. Oh, uh, oh I thought Matt Seidel match. was coming over. Okay. I wonder if they're going to subtitle it, like the, the grand championship convoluted convoluted match. <laughs> <laughs> they should. Moose and Storm come out to the ring. Storm's been on a roll lately going into business for himself. <laughs> Absolutely destroying that microphone. And it's clear that Moose said, I'm talking first this time, bitch. Um, and gets his stuff in. They're there to call out MMA. Bobby MMA and Daddy actually, MMA. Actually, this is the first time you're right. They actually did call out M MMA in a whole, in general. Instead yeah. of just American top team. They called out all of MMA this time. Yeah, they did. They called yeah. out MMA. Yeah. Oh, wait, AATT is practically all of MMA anyway, so. Why are you just repeating what I'm saying? What do you mean? I'm not I repeating. just said they just called out MMA. Mm. Why did you have to, like, you don't need to reinforce that. But I like, putting my, I like putting my two cents in, because I want to hear my voice. Your two cents are worthless in this case. Save well, it for what, something worthwhile. What do you mean? Why do you have me here, That's then? That's mean. I know, right? Why are you being Don't be mean? such a bully, Stooge. What the hell, man? I'm hurt now about this. Are well, you I've, I've been mean to you this you... whole time. Not once. Why is Bobby Lashley still there? He was meant to leave to go to MMA, yet he's like, <laughs> I'm just so confused and perplexed. Every time we watch, you, you do make the same comment over and over Why? and over. He's not doing a good job of leaving. <laughs> For someone who's fed up with wrestling, he seems to do a goddamn Thank great you. deal of it. I don't think he's had an MMA match in a while, but he's had at least <laughs> seven, eight wrestling yeah. matches <laughs> since he quit wrestling. But anyway, so Bobby MMA and Daddy MMA take exception to what Moose is saying. Comes out. Moose gets the crowd to chant Bitch Boy Bobby at Bobby Lashley. That was so rude. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was a bit rude. That was hilarious. You don't call someone a bitch, it especially that great. size. It's great. But look, I think Bobby did stand his own ground when he said, you know, you're just sheep. You're just doing what he's telling you to do. Um, next up, the crowd. <laughs> James Storm got the crowd to chant Poo Poo <laughs> at Daddy MMA. Yeah, I don't know how he got that over. But he did. <laughs> how do you get poo-poo over? Oh, wait, I forgot. Paid crowd. <laughs> no, but even still, mm. they, they can't get over yet over with them. Poo-poo? Yeah! Poo-poo. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn they... wrestling fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like what we're leading to is Storm versus Daddy MMA, and it's a loser leaves impact wrestling match. Ooh. Bobby Lashley versus Moose. That's going to be just a big heavyweight punch-up. I can tell you right now, Daddy MMA is keeping his record of 100% in um, wrestling. So unfortunately, I can't argue that because he is 1-0. Mm -hmm. He cheated, didn't do anything. He didn't cheat, he used TW. He got no, there's no such thing. I'm so sick of this TW bullshit. There's no such thing. It's called strategy. Idiot. No, it's TW. Strategy it's is a... Like, well, can you look up a dictionary? But everyone else is Definitions are fucking words. But everyone ever says yeah, TW. What do you mean? They're your, like, zombies. They're, your, they're not like, my zombies. They're idiots. our fans. You can't call them zombies. Come on, dude. They're not fans. They're cult of Banks members. They're just as dumb as you are. No, what do you mean? You can't call our fans dumb, too. What's going on? I'm just... I'm, Are you okay? No, I'm having enough of this. What, what's wrong? Can't even do a show without this is. Stop being so mean. Anyway, let me. Can I finish this? Anyway, so Lashley and Moose get into a brawl. It leads up the ramp. They end up leaving the arena. Daddy MMA is left with Storm in the ring. KM tries to save Daddy MMA and ends up eating shit to James Storm. Um, Daddy MMA, of course. Being the cowardly bastard he is, rolls out of the ring and runs away and leaves Storm standing over KM, who was just trying to impress Aww. him. KM clearly has daddy issues. I was just about to say it. Got to be quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of this whole situation, this whole MMA versus wrestling? It's been going for a while now, like, it, and Storm versus daddy MMA, Dan Lambert. I told you my result already. Daddy MMA is going to keep his 100% record. So Storm's going to leave Impact. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. Like Daddy MMA, a non-wrestler who's come in to, I don't know what, to annoy the shit out of Impact for no reason whatsoever. I wouldn't say annoy. He's going to take out James Storm, who's a TNA original and been there since the beginning. Yes. It's I, wrestling. Yeah. Anything can happen on the day. And you're okay with that? I'm absolutely 100% fine with that. That's crap. Why is that crap? 
because one, these guys shouldn't even be in Impact. They they've got their own shit going on. Piss off back to MMA. Do they though? Like really? I, I Do feel they? Like they don't. And I feel like I feel like they should just stick around. But why? What but, do they bring into the product, really? They're excited. What, what is, like, this is just annoying. It's yeah. almost as annoying as you are. Like, having to put up oh. with your Cult of Banks bullshit, your oh. Book of Bob, people fucking calling me out because what? they're a part of your Cult of Banks. What, what's going on? Where's this all coming from? I thought we were supposed to be, I like, put up with this for so long, I've had enough of it. Like, are you serious? What? Are you seriously doing this? Yeah, I'm doing it. That's it. This is done. Fuck what? this. What? No, I'm out. You haven't you finished the show. show. What? Excuse what's me. Here, see you later. Dude. Ah. Um, uh, what did you do? Finally. <laughs> finally. Now uh, we'll have the end of this! Uh, oh God. Uh, well, because now I am in charge, I guess I will do the main event. And I am now joined by my co-host, the knockout, Fiona. I'll take the hot seat. Yeah. Ooh, I can get used to this. Okay, we have to read uh, Rick's weird writing. Give us a second. So we head on to the main event now. Sorry about this, guys. This is a bit, you know, full on. I, he just had I don't a... know if I should go after him or not. Well, I don't know where he went. He just, like, disappeared. Like, he just gone. But anyway, let's go back to this, because this is what we're going to focus on. Our bae, yeah. Miss Van Ness. Our Laurel Van Ness, our queen, we should say, mm. versus Rosemary for the Knockouts title. We've been waiting for this for weeks now. I've been enjoying it. Um, I know you've been enjoying it, and... You know, obviously when Stooge was around, he was enjoying it. But it's finally come to a conclusion. Yay. We get to see these two girls finally go at it. And it goes at, um, let's see, what did he Well, he... Stooge and I were arguing for like 10, we would have argued the whole episode actually about who should win this. And I called Laurel because it's 2018. We need a fresh start. We need a fresh face and holding the Rosemary has been champion before. Yeah, yeah. and like... Bloody, what was her thing with Abyss and Crazy Steve? Um, Decay. Was Decay. They were just, they were around for yeah, a Yeah, they were around for a long time. Like, yeah, yeah, she didn't have a title. Oh, wait, she even did have she a title. She did and yeah. did it, yeah. Oh, well. I feel we need a fresh start. Well, yeah. we do need a fresh start, but, so that's why. And Laurel's character, she's channeling a little bit of, like, Courtney Love, so she's still broken, but she looks a bit more like a washed up rock star. Mm -hmm, 100%. With her like crazy jacket. And I love that look, by the mm. way. That's my favorite look of Laurel Van Ness. I like her when she's more broken. <laughs> but anyway, so we'll go on to the um, match itself. What did you think of the match? It was good. Mm -hmm. It Yeah, I am so glad we finally get to see Laurel slash Chelsea actually wrestle. Yeah, no. And not in a wedding dress and bare feet. <laughs> goodness. Yeah. And I'll, I gotta admit, I did enjoy that also. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah, this match was spectacular. You know, these two just put on the greatest performance ever. Yeah, they must have wrestled heaps on the indies. I yeah, well, I, 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 I know um, Rosemary and... Um, um, Ali, Ali and I've um, Sienna and all yeah, that. Yeah, they've wrestled in the indies many a times yeah. with each other, but I'm not too sure about mm. Laurel. But um, a lot of people do know Laurel in the indie scene, mm. so yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the match was great. We had a spectacular finish. Um, so what what happened was the little baby ref, as we like to call him, Mima ref, because he looks oh, like a French mime. He really does. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he was getting adorable. He was getting in the way for some reason. He was mm. trying to stop Laurel from... You know, attacking Rosemary. Uh, so I reckon. That Is that what he was doing? Earl Hebner like, taught, like got on the got on the blows yeah. to the new refs and went. You know, keep my tradition FYI, going. FYI, yeah. <laughs> when it's the knockouts and they're a little bit too um, handsy with each other, don't be afraid to, to get, get in, in there, there and yeah. really like grab them hard by the waist at the most inappropriate times and just really like make sure you're manhandling it's them, only really the best way it's the best way to do it yeah. it settles them down thanks Earl not, thanks for that wisdom passed on you gotta keep today. yeah gotta keep that tradition going as you say <laughs> can't let old traditions die Sienna was Even the though, best yeah. when she called him out she's like don't touch me old she, man he never touched Sienna I wonder why <laughs> but yeah so anyway so he was trying to stop Laurel because yeah she was trying to do something shifty she eventually pushes him out of the way where nice. Um, she tried to then attack Rosemary, who was uh, perched up on the ropes. Yeah, top rope. Yeah, yeah. top rope. Then she, uh, Rosemary tried to uh, miss uh, Laurel, where she missed um, unbelievably. That was, I think, that's the second or yeah, maybe even mm. the first time she's missed the miss before. Oh no, she yeah, missed a couple it. of times. Yeah, a couple yeah. of times. 
Yeah, anyway, so she misses her, gets her hands, and then Laurel, using her tactical awareness, mm. uses the mist and takes it to her advantage and puts it in her own eyes, you know, making Rosemary's downfall. And therefore, we have a new champion, Laurel Van Ness, ladies and gentlemen. Everything's looking good, you know what I mean? We finally got rid of the Stooge, Laurel's champion. <laughs> like this is That's a bit harsh. This is becoming a good year. I this... think you should go and like, you know, make amends after this, but yeah. Well, I don't know. He he'll get it's over it. It's his show. Like Yeah, you know. I know it's his show, but like, you know, at the end the of the day. The Cold of Banks would be nothing without him, come on. But at the end of the day, like, you know, if it wasn't for me, where would the show be? Like, come on, let's be real here. <laughs> like, I'm the mastermind. <laughs> Anyway, speaking about masterminds, we go into the alleyway for the final scenes of this show, where Sammy Callahan is looking to get stabbed. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Come on. Let, <laughs> let's be, like, I want it to happen. I'm pretty sure you wanted it to happen. I don't know. He might do the stabbing. I see. Yeah, him well, he looked. Yeah, he looked like a stabber. But like, come on, he's in the alleyway. You know, invited by Cohan. You like at least you're gonna get stabbed, dude. Like oh, in you a know, park or something. Yeah, they're in a Car park. park yeah, alleyway. Look, dude, that's freezing like, their tits off. Yeah. Everyone gets stabbed there. Are yeah, you serious? Oh God. So anyway, yeah, he's walking around. He's pestering other people, trying to look for um, Conan. And then there we go. We have the Lord himself sitting there on the park, uh, park <laughs> bench, looking all majestic. You know, with those shades at night time. In I like gotta say, minus three. Yeah, three minus or whatever the but hell. But I gotta it say, be. he was looking oh. schmick in that leather jacket. Yeah. So yeah, Sammy Cowan goes up to him, tries to do the whole tough guy act, goes, Hey man, this is my territory now, blah, 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 I'm from Oahu. Like, you know, whatever, I don't know what he was saying. Then Conan gave him the, you know, one, two, three, goes, Look, listen here, buddy, I don't know what you do back in, like, your little trailer parks back in wherever you're from, but here down in LAX, we got, oh, I should say Ottawa. We got our shit down packed, so yeah, if he's going to step into our territory, business and blah, 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 goes and, you know, does all this stuff. He threatened Sammy's girlfriend's dog. Okay, that took That's a bit like far. That's like Mexican yeah, yeah, okay. gangster so, style. I love Max. Conan. Yeah, but that... was a chihuahua. Yeah, it was a chihuahua. A Mexican dog. Yeah, yeah, I would... That, that, that took... <laughs> That's when I knew it was serious. So I was like, holy <laughs> shit, calm down, Conan. You're friending the dog. Like, yeah, go for the businesses. Go for the girlfriend. No worries. <laughs> Don't touch that dog, dude. Please. Anyway... So, yeah, Sammy Callan didn't get stabbed, unfortunately. So, you know, he just got threatened. But we'll see where this goes. But, uh, yeah, I think that's a wrap-up for well, our year. No, Sammy had the last word, didn't what? he? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did the Barney Stinson. I forgot about it. Thank you for what reminding me. What was that? Literally, he... Magi amateur, I think Chris Angel talked to him or something. And by Chris no, Angel, I mean, funny. what's his name? Um, Jimmy Jacobs, yeah. It's Job from Arrested Development. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Sammy Callahan did some sort of magician trick, and I think Conan's face is burnt or something. I don't know if he's got third degree yeah. burns now. Yeah, because of Sammy Callahan's amateur magicianing. But yeah, <laughs> that leads the year for Anime. Like, well, yeah, there is two wrap up shows, as Stu said at the start of the show, but we're not going to cover that because. We will not be watching those. Yeah, and let's face it, you just can do it on the Global Force, yeah. you know, the Global Wrestling Network, whatever. Again, pay us because we've been doing it for weeks. <laughs> anyway. Any uh, highlights for the year quickly? Um, it's been a roller coaster. It has been a roller coaster. Uh, mm, my highlight of the year is going to be, you know what? Eli taking the title. Yeah. I was going to give it to EC3, but you know what? Eli getting it. And fair and square too. Like, it was just, you, you can't take that away from and him. That was, and that was an unintended circumstance yeah, as well. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Well, like with, with all the backstage stuff the that was happening. With, uh, Patron and, and yeah, all the stuff going down. Yeah. Like, we don't need Patron's, you know, personal life, life. media attention at a time with like enough bullshit, turbulent <laughs> yeah. attention of our own. And like so, at that time, the yeah. company was trying to make themselves like legitimate and mm -hmm. stuff. They had been like, you know, had Jim Cornette yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. So yeah, and Anthem and was new signing. management team. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, Jeff Jarrett was there. But like, you know. <laughs> But yeah, they were trying to be serious, then <laughs> Elbertron goes and fights with Pe Well, you know, yeah. it wasn't his fault perfectly, but you know, shit happens. Yeah, but. so where would Eli have been without that? That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, true. And well. Sorry, Stooge, but sucked in. No more slap nuts. Let's oh, hope we have God. seen the last of him. I'm sick of he that may guy. He the founder of TNA, and TNA what it was back in the day. And yes, we are a bit stuck in the past, Stooge yeah. and I, but it was, it was a magical time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, move it's on. now 2018. Anthem Impact, the Owl's in charge. I know, right? I'm bit, she's looking good too, by the way, i got to say. The Owl's looking great. <laughs> that Owl's a bitch, I reckon. I wouldn't cross her. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't cross her. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I wouldn't cross her, but she, yeah, she's looking good. What was your highlight of the year? Um, I probably agree with that, actually. And just, yeah. The Eli Triumph. 
And then, you know what? They're still Just here. Just the transitioning to... It's weird without the Hebners. It's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is like, this whole pay, Canada thing is Paid taking, Canadian crowd is weird. Sure. It's taking time. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's taking time. But I, I feel like eventually when they, you know, settled in, like, put their Canadian boots on, as they say. The, the global, like, influence, like, having uh, the, the connections with the different networks and then showcasing, go to AAA and... Yeah, well, uh, as we saw today and, and when the yeah. show started, they said they had a channel opening up in Italy. So, yeah, yeah they're, they're progressing very or like very gradually around the world so that's some good signs we're still here we'll still watch yeah. i don't know about you guys what's gonna happen with your yeah show? i know well dude keep watching because now i'm pretty sure it's going to be called the g bank show starring the knockout fiona because let's you. face it <laughs> we're never going to see the stooge again oh well, let's hope we don't see the stooge again for now for now we say goodbye but not forever we will see you next year my friends i have been your leader and now finally your host g banks and Knock out Fiona, signing out. Have, ha happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Have a good one. Hanukkah, whatever you do. Peace. <laughs>